love antiques as much as the next girl that loves antiques. And when I first met Steve and came into his home, I noticed that he too has an eye for antiques and I felt an instant connection. Up here, we have an antique chandelier from a castle in France dated 1820. Up on the wall there, we have a vintage saw and on the fireplace, we have some antique snowshoes, both of which came from an antique store in Greenwood, BC. And then in the kitchen, we have a couple of items on top of the kitchen cupboards, a copper kettle and a copper jug, both of which I've had an eye for since I moved in. And it wasn't until very recently, within the last year, that I decided to ask Steve, what antique store did you get those at? And he said, I made them. I love antiques so much. I freaking married one. Hey everyone, welcome back. I am just on my way down to the lower part of the property at home to sort through a pile of logs that I've tried to sort through before. Last winter, that pile of logs kind of down by the creek. It's just been on my list of things to do in general because we, at some point, I don't know when we can get to it, at least we might be able to start at least the foundation for it this this year maybe no promises we want to build another little cabin down closer towards the creek that's kind of on our ski trail and it's going to be a little same thing 10 by 10 something small for kind of like a warming hut like a little ski around cool little winter cabin of course i would camp in it at any time I've been wanting to do a little cabin on this property for years and it just never ha ends up happening. We end up just getting so busy, but the pile of logs is kind of in the way where the cabin needs to go and it needs to be dealt with. And in there are a lot of skinny logs that don't seem to be usable or at least really millable, but I'm gonna see if I can't make them into something. And then in terms of the cabin that I'm building on the cliff, I have a lot of scrap lumber out there. A lot of it I can use for, I do need to build a little outhouse of some sort and a woodshed of some sort and start cleaning up the land there. There's so much downfall and we're in like a red hot zone for forest fires at that property. So cleaning up the forest is something I really wanna do and start collecting burn barrel firewood. So I can use that scrap stuff that I have for those builds strapping i don't have strapping needs to be the same thickness more or less so i think i'm going to try and make some strapping with some of those logs down there that aren't really maybe millable for other things maybe some of the cedar i can use for posts we can use for footings post footings or whatever for the little cabin so anyways we'll see i'm heading down there now to start going through that i actually need to switch over an attachment on the bobcat so i'd have to bring the bobcat up switch an attachment but we'll see what we'll see what it's like when we get down there I just brought down the bobcat with the forklift on there. Tried to start that and it won't start. So the batteries are dead. The batteries had died over the winter and we had to take them out and charge them up. They are dead again. I'm gonna have to take the forklift off the bobcat. Just kind of set it off to the side. I'll take the bobcat back up, go get the little excavator attachment for it and then just switch attachments, I suppose.
Okay, I'm gonna be done that for the day and uh, time for supper. So I usually ask myself every day, what am I cooking for supper? And today I don't have to ask myself that. Thank you to HelloFresh, the sponsor of today's video. I have been wanting to try HelloFresh for years. And every time I've ever suggested it to Steve, this is what he says. But I like your cooking. Aha, that's it. Exactly the problem my cooking. I do it all. I do the prepping, the cooking, the cleaning, and that's fine. I'm not complaining about that, but I lose inspiration and creative ideas and motivation every single day of the week. So I'm really thankful for HelloFresh. Though I love cooking, there are many days I'd rather continue working and being outside rather than being inside and cooking dinner, especially in the summer. With HelloFresh, all you need is 15 minutes to put a really tasty, nutritious, satisfying meal on the table made right at home in your own kitchen. It's 25% cheaper than takeout, less expensive than grocery shopping too. It's really easy. Just choose your recipes, pick your delivery date, and fill your days with other fun plans knowing dinner's covered. Chef-crafted recipes, pre-portioned ingredients, and step-by-step -step instructions has taken so much of the creative weight off my shoulders. What I also love about HelloFresh is I threw this meal together in a cinch, didn't have to go to the grocery store, didn't waste any produce, and it allowed more time in the day so Steve could go mountain biking and me, well, so I could go back out and get working on pulling nails. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code 50Michigas at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. Again, HelloFresh.com. Use the code 50Michigas at the checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. <laughs> Good morning. It's LI. It's the afternoon. I would like to say it's still the morning, but it's not. I spent about an hour last night and only got, I don't know, seven or eight boards done of nails. Like, some of them have more nails than I can even get out. They're, they're littered with tiny little nails and they're all bent and rusted. And This board, for example. <laughs> Not that anyone cares. I'm not going to show you me taking the nails out, but like all these ones are just going to end up staying in. They're already like that, bent over, so whatever. Just leave them. That's still a pretty big pile to go through, but anyway, I'll just pick away at it. Just coming home. <laughs> Hi, darling. I thought I heard something rustling in the bushes. Entertain your mom. Hi, baby. <laughs> oh, you smell like the forest. Hi, babes. Good boy. Good boy. Just in time for supper. <laughs> this is the small log section. One of the things that I've never done before is mill two logs at the same time. It's not really a skill. I guess it's just a technique that I've never done before. So I'm going to do that now and see what that's like. This bark is coming off like really well and it's full of dirt and rocks. So I'm going to peel it.
never know it based on the video, but I've been pulled away yesterday and today so many times <laughs> by different things, vet phone calls, vomiting, dogs going missing, um, taking care of these guys. Right. For the next four or five days, I'm looking after our friend's dogs from down the road, Sherwin and Kootenai. They're great dogs, pretty easy to take care of, but it's still two extra lives that I'm in charge of. So I just have to make sure that they're good and safe. Anyway, I was thinking while I was away, these probably don't even need to be really rotated. Like the strap, it could be live edge if you wanted, because it doesn't really matter. But just for the sake of practice, I'm going to flip them around anyway. thought one of these trees was hemlock <coughs> so I was thinking it was hemlock and anyway surely someone else out there has used cedar for strapping before right I still also have not decided how I'm doing the siding I will get to that I think I'll start to ask you guys your opinion whether to do the vertical reverse live edge board and batten or the same like live edge lap siding, horizontal. The way that I did the little shed, uh, I'm torn, I can't decide. So I'm gonna pull some out, we'll look at it, and I'll get you guys' opinions. Anyway, I, if I do the vertical live edge, I will need revert, like I will need the battens. So, and I will need cedar. Nothing goes to waste. What are you filming? You. What for? What's going on, Billy Bob? <laughs> you kind of want much to do. Don't me. But it must be a slow day, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> okay, love. You let the hard stuff, let me deal with the hard stuff. You deal with the cooking. <laughs> <laughs> You're making the lunches and breakfast and suppers as well, but you let the man take care of the difficult stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What would you like for supper tonight, sir? Pasta. Oh, good. We've got some. Good. All right. So we determined, or whatever, you determined. Batteries were okay. There must be a loose connection. See how they're both on the charger and they were both 14 volts. Oh, still won't start. Okay, stop. It goes down to five, it goes down to five volts. So the batteries are no good. Yeah. All right, that's it for that. For those of you who have been watching for a while, you know that we're passionate about rescuing pets, rescuing dogs. Primarily, we try to take in seniors, seniors with disabilities or dogs with disabilities with our own 
crew right now, I started Riley and Clyde on some arthritis medication. It's an injectable medication that once they're loading doses of once a week are done, they take it. I give it to them once a month and it's an injection. Hannah was on that who passed away last year and she uh, did well with it. So I've started those two on that. Clyde, 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 baby, baby, it's okay. You're okay. I know. Hmm. I'm sorry. There we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow, he doesn't handle that well at all. Come here, sweetie. Oh, we gotta give you this medication. Good boy. Yeah. Oh, what a good boy. That's, that's how it should go. Clyde is really sensitive. And then as you know, Lenny, I've mentioned before, is on some heart medications. I never mentioned formally in any video that Lenny does have Chagas disease. So we found out in early February that he has it for sure. And that is what caused the heart arrhythmia that he had gone into in December and nearly died. So poor little Lenny had heartworm and has Chagas. He no longer has the heartworm that was treated we treated that but unfortunately the Chagas disease there is no cure and so that's what caused that arrhythmia that he had and that is why he's on these heart medications now for life because he's probably had it for some time and, and he does have problems with his heart so that's why Lenny is so sort of sickly looking like it's why he's thin he just there's a psychological thing to it Lenny is a long story Lenny was very abused by both dogs and people and there's a huge psychological issue that he has around eating with other dogs in the house that we've come to notice since he stayed with Bruce and apparently at Bruce's house for that month that we were away Lenny didn't have a problem eating so we are trying to manage that the best that we can but and he always looks really sad in the videos and people notice that but I mean he does smile sometimes but it's hard it's hard to shake that from him hard to erase those memories for him because I think it was his whole life. I mean, if you walk up to Lenny, he cowers all the time. <laughs> Clyde just came home again. I gotta feed him. Good boy. Hi, baby, I knew you were in home. I did, I did, I did. Okay. Oh, you're wet. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's it for this video. Actually, one more thing. I'm gonna have one more dog tomorrow. Bruce has asked if I could take care of Arrow for tomorrow night. So come tomorrow night, it'll be a seven dog night. That should be fun. That's it for this video, you guys. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye. that time of year. <laughs> All those green things from the weeds. So funny. Kootenai has the coot, coot. You can do it, Clyde. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on, Lenny. Come on, Lenny. You can do it. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, little darling.